Ricardo's transferring the garden party from Buckingham Palace. <laughs> Now, what would you think that was? Any guesses? Queen's bird bath. Hang on, it's a statue. It's Acker Milk. <laughs> Four. What is he doing? Measuring. Don't be nosy. <laughs> Good evening. I'm glad you said that, missus, because that's what's going on on my timesheet. What is? Evening. We're three minutes over now. But will they believe that in the office? Of course they won't. They never do. He just sits there and sneers. Who does? Hobbs. He might have skin trouble. He wants to go out on the fans now and again, find out what it's really like. Well, you never know what it's like to get out in the vans, do you? Exactly. Oh, he's very good at nicking carbon paper from the fur. But you ask you to put down three minutes over time, you don't want to know. <laughs> he ought to go out in the vans now and again. Exactly. <laughs> it was the same with the dinner and dance. He can't do the quick step better than anyone else, can he? Oh, no. <laughs> he should try your job. Exactly. Out measuring in all weathers. Exactly. What are you measuring, exactly? Windbreak. A windbreak. Woman wants a windbreak here, by the fence. Well, you, you're going to put a windbreak up here by the fence? Yeah, yeah, well, I'm measuring. You're not going to put it up tonight, are you? Right, I'm not. But we're seven minutes over now. We're all seven minutes over. I'd knock off if I were you. Oh, I'm going to. What? Right, that's me done. All right, lads. Home. <laughs> well, you've got five minutes before tea. Do you want to uh, paralyze a car industry? Bring the dockers out. <laughs> Barbara, if Margaret puts up a windbreak here, it's going to throw a dirty great shadow all over those fruits we've just put in. Oh, yes. Fruits which hopefully are going to be our equivalent to the gold standard. Well, do you think she'd mind if we asked her to put it further along? I'll tell you what, we'll ask her and I'll turn on the old charm. Charm? You? <laughs> you avoid, didn't you? Yes, well, I was a late developer. How oh, very, very nice of you to come round, Margot. Thank you. Please, sit down. Can I get you in? No, thank you. Nothing. I was just thinking how very nice you look today. What do you want? <laughs> no, 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 no. Nice is the wrong word. No, you look very, you look very elegant. What do you want, Tom? I just want to pay you a compliment. Why? <laughs> does there have to be a why? Yes. Now, what do you want? Barbara, what does Tom want? He's just being charming. How do you know he was being charming if you were out of the room? <laughs> ah, well, in that case, we want you to move your windbreak. No, why should I? It's absolutely vital, Margaret. You see, our surplus of veg last year didn't show much of a profit, so we decided to change it to a surplus of soft fruits this year. It will bring in a lot more, you see. Yes, now, you see, if you put your windbreak up where you intend to, they won't get enough sun, so if you could just move it a little bit further down the fence, we'd be all right. I see. Hey, Margaret. Hey, 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 Margaret. Hey. <laughs> Very well. If I were to be confronted by Barbara wearing even more threadbare clothes later this year, I suppose I'd never forgive myself. Margot, thank you. Radiantly elegant, I would have said. You can stop now, Tom, I'd agree. <laughs> I'll get Mr. Bailey to move the whole thing further down the garden tomorrow. Oh, you meant to ask you, yes. What, uh, what is this thing? Oh, um, didn't you realise? I am building a little arbour. For boots? <laughs> I wonder why I bother to tell you anything. Well, tell me then. No, you're just as bad. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, well, I've been dying to tell somebody. I am having a little arbour, a sort of little temple dedicated to music. With you as the High Priestess. With me as the new president of the Music Society. A sort of Serpentin Isadora Duncan. Certainly not. <laughs> that woman was a lewd foreign exhibitionist. I am concerned with art. What does he do? <laughs> do you want to hear about my plans or not? Sorry. Well, the members of my society will be able to come along and rehearse in an atmosphere of sylvan, perhaps almost Elysian charm. <laughs> what? With all the neighbours looking over the fences, they hang their washing out. <laughs> it's a jolly sight better than Miss Mantraff's sordid little flat. Of course it is, Mugger Blind. You've got scope there. I should put on my either if I were you. You're not on the lawn. You're the saddle as well as the shrubbery. Andre Previn of the LSO sitting on your concrete mushrooms. It must be a bit. <laughs> it's all just a big joke to you, isn't it? That lot would be. Well, it isn't to me. Oh, Mugger, you've got to see the funny side of it. There isn't one. Oh, come on. No, I won't come on. 
You make such a virtue of always seeing the funny side of things, but it isn't a virtue when it's me you keep seeing the funny side of. <laughs> but, Margot, that's what Margot is for. <laughs> well, I'm sick of it. And if you are set on playing the red-nosed comedian for the rest of your life, I suggest you find yourself another stooge. <laughs> but, Margot, you're the best in the business. Oh, shut up! <laughs> Get your hands off that. Just trying to help, Mr. Bailey. Never mind help. You are unskilled labour. When you're old enough for erections, you erect. In the meantime, keep your hands off this windbreak. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Bailey. All right, then. All right, Wally. Yeah. All right, Wally, lift him. Don't just stand there, you little give us a hand. <laughs> No, really, Tom. I think we went a bit too far with Margot yesterday. I think we ought to go next door and apologise. Yeah, well, perhaps you're right. Well, I mean, she's a good sort, really, old Margot. The petty-minded bit. <laughs> well, she promised she wouldn't put that up there. That's just spite. Right. Come on. <laughs> All right, where's Margot? Oh, so there's a police raid. <laughs> Where is she? Out. Are you sure you don't mean she's upstairs? Well, not unless she's shinned up the drain pipe. I saw her going out of the front door. Ah, couldn't face it, eh? I can't face her at this hour of the morning. What do you want? Margot, promise not to put the windbreak up there now. Just because she can't take a joke, she has put it up there, Jerry, out of spite. I'll take it out with Margot when she comes back. I've got to go to work. It isn't funny. <laughs> hey, this. You've torn my financial times. <laughs> I'm very, very sorry. I do realise that's the eighth deadly sin, but my fruit is suffering. Well... Give it an aspirin. You don't seem to care at all. Of course I don't. Oh, Jerry, look. Just tell him to move it. That's all I want you to do. Just tell him to move Come on, Jerry. Get off. Not a damn puppet. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my jacket on over my crumpled shirt sleeve. I'm going to put my torn financial times in my feet. I'm going to work. That's right. Go on. Turn your back on things. Pretend they don't exist. And certainly what I'm going to try to do with you two. Martha's gone back on her word. Look, I don't know the ins and outs of your latest squabble. You don't have to. Just do what we want and we'll be satisfied. Oh, yes. That's the cornerstone of your whole egocentric philosophy these days, isn't it? The goods are in there. Heavens are all right with the world. But, Jerry, you like us. We're nice. No, you're not. Not when you come in here before I'm awake and start behaving like a couple of stormtroopers. All right, we're sorry. I tell you what. Now, look, you go to work, wake up in your own time, and then have a good think about the rights and wrongs of this matter. Then phone Margot and tell her she's in the wrong. I'm <laughs> damned if I will. You're ignoring three fundamentals. One, Margot bought that windbreak. Two, she's paying to have it put up. And three, it's in her own garden. And four, she doesn't need to apply to you for planning permission. And five, if I get stuck in the traffic on London Bridge this morning, I shall probably have a nervous breakdown, and I shall send you the bill for the damn psychiatrist. <laughs> I think we lost that one on point. Did we? We'll see. They won't move the windbreak, right? Right. Then how's this for the KO? We move all the fruit. Oh, we us moving all that again. Exactly, and then they'll feel guilty, and then who will have won? Answer me that. <laughs> Me. Yes, Trog. You are quite sure that there is some moral victory in this? Yes, of course I am. And moral victories are always painful. Because I'm thinking of taking up some lighter employment, like down the lines. Then, my love, we outmaneuvered the windbreak. I still think we should have burnt it. It's a petty thing for her to do. Oh, well, that's just the point, you see. But we have not sunk to her level. And why? Because we are on a higher spiritual plane. Yes, definitely. Oh. You think we've earned a nap? Yes, I do. Mr. Bailey, I want to see you in my drawing room at once. Won't be a minute. That is correct. You will be ten seconds. <laughs> yes. Tell me, why have you erected my windbreak in the wrong place? It isn't. That's where you wanted it. Originally, yes. But after consultation with my neighbours, I agreed to move it. Well, how was I to know that? I'm not psychic. But you are impertinent, Mr. Bailey. <laughs> I went out early this morning, so I left a note. I didn't read no note. That is transparently obvious. It does not alter the fact that I left one. Now, did you or did you not see a pale blue envelope cellotaped to the handle of your pickaxe this morning? <laughs> yes, I did. And what was written on that envelope? N.B. Well? 
Well, I'm not N. Bailey, I'm Arthur Bailey, A.B. <laughs> you stupid man. <laughs> Can we love that? I can because I pay your wages and get off my carpet. <laughs> For your information, Mr. Bailey, N.B. means nota bene. Who? It's Latin. Ah, oh, well, I come from Ballam. <laughs> Very well, the fact that you come from Ballam probably does excuse your ignorance of even elementary Latin. It does not excuse ignoring a written instruction which is sellotaped to the handle of your pickaxe. Written instructions are for white collar workers. I'm manual. I see. So unless a sign reads, keep off the grass, Mr. Bailey, and all other manual workers, you ignore it, do you? I didn't mean that. Well, what do you mean, Mr. Bailey? Well, I mean, it's up now. It's, 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 it's a fait accompli. Oh, so we know French in Ballam, but not that. <laughs> Give it a speech. It's up. Well, then take it down again. Why? So that my neighbours don't think I have gone back on my word of honour. Now, kindly move my windbreak. Say I said no. Then I should report you to your managing director. Ah, oh, he's a personal friend of yours, I suppose. Yes. He yeah. also <laughs> happens to be the lead tenor in my music society, Mr. Bailey. N.B., Mr. Bailey. Look, I didn't say I wouldn't move it. I said, say I wouldn't. Then move it, Mr. Bailey. And keep your verbal convolutions to yourself. Hey, Wally, stop what you're doing. Lady Face Egg wants a windbreak move. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> Where you want it? Yes, it is. You sure? Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you very much. The devil's acting down there. Look, I was told to move it, so I moved it. By the people next door, I presume? No, by your wife. I'll check on that. If you're lying, you're going to be in very hot water. Do you understand? Hurry <laughs> <laughs> up, Wally. The sooner we're out of here, the better. What a beautiful evening. Evening, Miss Bailey. Good evening. Boy, <laughs> <laughs> just a minute. Yes? Did you move that windbreak? Yeah. Who told you to? The woman here. That's just me. She's no right to do that. Uh, what about my rights? I do have them, you know. It's just they're not allowed to come out in this district. <laughs> Stop moaning. Wally, tools. Don't bother, because you're going to have to move it again. Come on. Run for it, Wally. It's on there. <laughs> what are you doing? Darling. <laughs> I'm going to do the drink. See you there in a moment, Jerry. All right. All right, where is she? You don't care at all. I don't care, Barbara, because I don't know what's going on. Oh, don't give me that, don't you? You have noticed that it's been moved. Yes, I have. Well, we didn't move it, so she must have. Well, he said she had, but I haven't had a chance to ask him. Well, when you ask her and she says no, she's lying, because she did, or he wouldn't have. Why did it move this morning? That was this morning. It was in the wrong place this morning. If you'd moved it this morning, it would have been the right place, but you didn't move it, so it's in the wrong place. Sir, answer that. How can I? It's gibberish. It's bad manners. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned bad manners. This is the second time today you've burst into my house and attacked my wife. How can we attack her? She's always in hiding. Yes, all she does is pop herself in and out now and again to move our windbreak, her windbreak, when we're not looking. And my fruit trees in my garden. Oh, and damn your garden. And damn your windbreak. Language? What is going on? Oh, oh she's taking your piece of chicken. Quite a pair of you. One more word out of either of you, and I swear I shall throw you both out of the French windows. Now, Margot, will you please tell us, as so simply as possible, why this piffling affair of the windbreak has been blown up into such dry proportions? Very well, Cherry. I don't see why Tom and Barbara are in such high dudgeon. Oh, don't you let me tell Shut you, Margot. Yes, ma'am. Well, Tom and Barbara asked me not to put the windbreak where I had originally intended. I left instructions for Mr. Bailey accordingly. Unfortunately, he did not read my note and put it up as per my original instructions. I came home, noticed, and made him move it. But in the meantime, we have moved all our fruit. I didn't know that. <laughs> we may have jumped to conclusions here. Obviously. Well, that's that sorted out. Good evening, Jerry. Good evening, Margaret. <laughs> Good evening, Barbara. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, Margot. Good evening, Margot. Good evening, Jerry. Good evening, Margot. Good evening, Jerry. Good evening, Margot. <laughs> oh. I expect you'd like us to stay to dinner. <laughs> You've certainly got a cheek. Margot? Why not? I think I can stretch my pasta. <laughs> Are you going to make a joke, Tom? No. <laughs> I'm just going next door to get a few bottles of peapot burgundy to say sorry. 
had to help things along. No, Tom, I wouldn't do that if I... Oh, dear. Oh, I thought you liked our homemade wine. Oh, we do, but not by the bottle. <laughs> it's um, hardly a table wine, is it? Oh, well, just think of it as an under-the-table wine. <laughs> Now then, Barbara, leave that. <laughs> it's all right, Jerry. Won't take a minute. It's the very most I can do. But there's no need. We have a dishwasher. Now, come on. You just hand me the things. <laughs> I say, hmm? would you mind not doing that? Why not? You asked me to hand them to you. No, no, no. Not that. No. What? That. <laughs> Jerry, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing what you're doing. Oh, that? No, yes, you're doing that. Against, no, don't. Stop it. And it's my hair. Yes, no, it's not that. No, it's, it's the gesture. <laughs> brings out the beast in me. <laughs> had a yen for you, you know that. <laughs> when you do, uh, well, more, more of a yen, really. Jay, Jay, don't you stop that. I can't help, it's a fact of life. Jay, I'm a married woman. Well, so am I. <laughs> I still fancy you. <laughs> Jay, you mustn't say things like that. It's very fluttering, but you mustn't say things like that. Of course, one reads about it in the papers. What? Wife swapping. <laughs> That's happened, you know. I think wife swapping is silly. I mean, after all, if a wife loves... <laughs> if a what? If a wife loves her husband, what is she going to swap him for? You do, don't you? What? Love your husband. Yes, I do, I do. And you love Margaret. Yes, I do. When you do that... Now, Jay. <laughs> Again. Jerry, why are you putting the dishes in the freezer? <laughs> because that is a dishwasher. It's not, you know. <laughs> well, where's the dishwasher? I don't know. <laughs> did you want it? Did you want it? Dishwasher. What are you doing, Tom? I'm writing you a note. How oh, nice. I hope it will be, Margot. I hope it will be. What does it say? It says, Dear Margot. Is that all? Yes, well, you see, it's a note of apology, and I'm not very good at apologizing. Well, perhaps I can help you. Who is it to? You. <laughs> Oh, yes, of course. Now, what shall we put? Well, now, I started with dear Margot. Oh, that's nice. Yes, I'll just say, yeah. You see, Margot, we treated you very badly today, and completely wrongly badly, and we had no right to because you didn't do anything out of spite. I may be something, Tom, but I am not spiteful. I am silly, I know that. <laughs> you tell me who calls you silly, Margot, and I'll thrash them. I call me silly. <laughs> oh, dear, why? Because I get into too many huffs. None of this would have happened this morning if I hadn't had a huff. What beautiful aspirates. <laughs> it's just that sometimes I get very tired of always being the butt of the joke. Seems to have been the story of my life somehow. Do you know something, Margot? That is one of the most infinitely sad things I've heard in the whole of my life. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm not feeling sorry for myself. I am. So am I. Oh, <laughs> I am not a complete woman, Tom. Aren't you? I haven't got a sense of humour. Don't you worry, I'll go and get you one. Do you know what they used to call me at school? Margot Ledbetter. No, I wasn't married then. <laughs> they used to call me Starchy. Is that your maiden name? <laughs> it was a term of ridicule. 
Starchy Sturgis, they used to call me. Ah, uh, boy, it's going to be very cruel. <laughs> it was a girl's school. <laughs> that made it worse somehow. You poor soul. I never understood the jokes, you see, so I became the butt of them. I've been the butt ever since. Oh, Margot. It's true. No, it's not true. It's not true. I mean, Margot, whatever anybody says, you are funny. <laughs> No, no, no. I didn't mean that. I meant that you do have a sense of humor. Of course you do. I don't. I don't. You do, you do. <laughs> oh, don't do that, please. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Look, look, look. We have laughs, the four of us. You join in then, sometimes. <laughs> Only because it's polite. I don't know why I'm laughing. <laughs> now, now, stop that. Oh, Tom. You're very manful at times. <laughs> and you are very womanful. No, I'm not. You can't be womanful if you're starchy. You are not starchy, Margot. You're a very attractive woman. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. And I'll tell you something else. You've got a very sexy neck. <laughs> You've never seen my neck. I'm looking at it now, Margot. Are you? Yes, and it's very sexy. in your washing up machine. That's all right. Tom and I have just been talking. Well, that's all we've been doing. <laughs> oh, isn't it wonderful to be friends again? Yeah, let's open another bottle ah. celebrate. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think I've had more. Ah, uh, uh, I can't feel my knees. <laughs> take me home, Bob. Oh, Tom, okay. I will. Providing you take me home. It's with pleasure. Will you? Ooh. Of course, it's going to have to be moved again. Oh, yeah. What is the windbreak. It's still not in the right place for you, Tom, is it? I can't keep track, is it? Either yes or no. No, it isn't. Hey, I know. What, what? Let's move it now. <laughs> now. <laughs> now. I know. <laughs> Come on, Margot. This is a laugh, isn't it? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why is it? Let me do it. Let me do it now. Stop it now. Seriously. <laughs> On the command, Liv. Liv! Hey! Hold it, hold it, hold it! <laughs> to me, to me! <laughs> Please tell me why it's funny. 